Welcome to Turning Inward. Our intention today is to open your heart and nurture your spirit as you travel on the road without miles, moving inward on your epic and personal journey of self-discovery. I am Rebecca Polvey, your co-host, and I'm here with Dr. Vivian Carrasco. This is the fifth episode of our spring 2015 season. We are excited to continue to share concepts from love being human with you and grateful that you are here with us. Today, we'll be exploring the concept of wisdom together. This podcast offers you the opportunity to explore new perspectives through compelling interviews with beautiful human beings and words of wisdom and love. The show was created to guide and inspire you. If you're looking for more meaning in your day-to-day life, if you're looking to be wowed by everyday people, if you are on a journey to joy, peace of mind, freedom, or a wild new adventure, then honey, you are in the right place. Welcome to Turning Inward with Dr. Vivian. Hello, Ms. Rebecca. Hi, Vivian. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, Vivian, I all oh, oh, I had such a hard time with this one. I tell you, I, I <laughs> it almost made your, Did it make your brain wrinkle? Oh, it wrinkled my brain. And I almost said, oh, for like two seconds, I interchanged them. Well, I think I'll ask Vivian if we can have a new word. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I never and then thought I thought, okay, well, but then I thought, you know what? Why is this so hard? Why am I struggling? And I thought maybe that's, and that was the little light bulb went off, you know, and I said, that's what wisdom is about, I think, that if you have a sense or an understanding that has come about through either the good experience or the struggles, and I thought, you know, my wisdom has been through acquiring intuition that can result in a positive outcome for myself or maybe in helping others. So I guess my first question that I came up with today, Vivian, is how do you perceive that what you are feeling, thinking, or doing is wise or not (laughs) (laughs) is that heavy (laughs) yeah well personally I'm gonna say that it just feels right but that's so wrong in a way because our feelings and our emotions don't have a lot to do with it there's this like you said it's an intuition there's this inner knowing on on whether it comes from wisdom and for me I I, the biggest trick for me I've learned recently is if it has no voice, then it's more than likely wisdom. If, if, if it has no voice, then it's coming from a deeper place inside of me. It's being stirred from, from within. Because often what I find is, is of my voice, you know, you can call it the ego or the critic or, you know, everybody calls it something different. It's that little nagging kind of, you know, scared self that's like, you know, I don't know. You should think about this, <laughs> you know, and sometimes you, you talk yourself into believing that voice and it can really trick you into staying in, in and close to what you feel comfortable with instead of moving towards where your soul wants to be free. And so for me, that's what I do. If it has no voice, if it's not talking to me and it's this inner knowing, this intuition, like you said, then I know it's wisdom. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. If it has no voice, I'm going to remember that, Vivian. That is beautiful and stirred from within. I like that, too. Well, you know, as part of when I was thinking about all this, I thought, you know, sometimes I feel just like a wise old soul who has Mm -hmm. just, you know, lived several lifetimes. Hundreds of years. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And, you know, and it feels like, but but I thought about it and I thought, you know, that feels very rich to me. It feels... It feels really good, and I think that I feel just grateful and on a lot of levels, but I feel grateful that I've opened my heart up, and I forgive myself um, for maybe some not-so-wise decisions, and and then I I can celebrate um, the growth um, from the wisdom that I've learned. And so I feel that um, gaining wisdom has made me a very happy woman, and that my wisdom has come from experiences or those, I'm going to call them aha moments, (laughs) 
um, where if something felt right or felt wrong, then I gained an insight. And um, so that leads me to my question, Vivian. Does having wisdom lead to using the best means to get to a desired outcome? Well, how will we ever know? I don't know. <laughs> I think... I think what, what my mind is pulling apart from, from those words is best. Because the, the moment in front of us opens up hundreds of opportunities. And then once this moment's gone, hundreds others open. And so that best changes so rapidly that, that it, I think it would be difficult for me to hold on to this is the best way. Because for me, there is no the best way. There's just this way, this way right now. And that allows us to let go of, you know, what isn't serving us in the past and what might be bringing us anxiety from the future. And I think the other thing that you said, did you say positive outcome or best outcome? Uh, what did you um, say after best? After best, um, desired outcome. I ah. said desired outcome. Hmm. I think maybe I should have said positive outcome. Well, not even positive because it's not always positive. And I, I was, I think I was imposing that positive part in there because sometimes it's a mess and that doesn't make it positive, right? Oh boy, you're right. I was thinking about that too. <laughs> but oh, and that's just life. <laughs> that's just life. And we, right. we, we are full of life all the time, whether it's a mess or not. So, so, so it's not, I think, I think instead of the, the best or the positive outcome, it's the outcome that serves the greater good. Mm. And, you know, I love bringing up stories of my boys who are really men. I just pretend that they're boys in my mind. Um, you know, it's kind of like when you put them into a routine because it serves them, but they fight against it. You know, they don't want to go down for a nap at a certain time. They don't want to eat at a certain time. But our body, you know, has its rhythms that we have to honor. And as I've gotten older, the one that I honor, you know, most reverently is getting eight hours of sleep. You know, it's, it's, it's the greater good. You know, what I might really want to do is something else. You know, it's hard to tear me away from a book that I am involved in. I mean, I'm the kind of girl that stood up all night under bed covers with a flashlight to finish my books. But I won't be at my best if I don't go to bed. So so it's just the greater good. And sometimes that's not positive for us. And sometimes it's not the best thing, but it's what's best for everyone. More along the lines of following your wise self. Like you said, you, you've lived, you know, hundreds of years is seeing beyond that short term and even that 10 year or 20 or 50 year outcome but seeing your legacy in front of you and what action would serve that legacy and what direction would help you follow and do your duty um i think that's wisdom and then i have a cute segue before i finish um i was i sometimes i find myself getting these cute little phone calls from my nephew, Ian, and he FaceTimes me and chit-chatting while they're in the drop-off line at school. And he's four. Yeah, he's four. <laughs> and he says, to, he, we were some, for some reason talking about age. And I said, how old do you think the Avivi is? And he said, you're 260. <laughs> so I have it by authority, Rebecca, that oh, I have wow. lived at least three lives. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> he is adorable. I, the other I was tucking him in once and it was this, you know, game, the tucking game, you know, it was the 10th time I had, you know, chased him from wherever he had gone and put him back into bed. And I said, this is it. This is the time. And he was kind of grinning and he goes, yeah, this is it. I'm ready. He said, now I'll oh. close my eyes and I'll talk to God. Oh, it is oh, just beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's that little weird. that little boy has a lot of magic inside of him. He does. Oh, that's so beautiful. What a blessing, Vivian. Oh. So I got distracted, but yeah, it's not always good. Um, no, you're you're right. So. Well, um, I, and I, I got to thinking also another question. It 
you know, it felt to me that uh, because I was struggling so much with it, I, I thought, you know, there really wasn't just one way to define wisdom. But what really came to my mind right away, or was to my heart, was humbleness, or or maybe having a, a gentle awareness came to my mind. It, you know, it feels like um, there's a softness in my spirit that is willing to let the walls down, and and I can be open that I need to learn or change direction. Um, you know, like when we're talking about all these different words and stuff, I'm, I'm willing to hear it and listen and, and, and put it through my filters and see if I need to think differently. And I, I think that um, maybe that's why wisdom flows a little freer if you listen and allow it to come forth. So, um, and I find that wisdom in being present and knowing like a person's heart and listening. So Vivian, um, my last question today is, how will our wisdom grow in the love being human experience? Oh, I like that one. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead. Oh, that was my favorite of, of, the, of the three questions. And I, it, it was originally up in the beginning and I moved it to last. I, don't, I, I wanted to ask that one last. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing that I wrote down was learn and change direction. And that reminded me of a memory I had or have from when I was young. Um, I think it was early, and this is in the first few years of my parents' divorce, and, and behind my bedroom window there was a playground that had a seesaw and, well, darn it, I think that's all it had was a seesaw. So, so you said change direction. I remember seeing myself... Ba trying to balance in the middle of that seesaw and that entertaining me for who knows how many hours. But I think that that's exactly what you said in, in, in the, you know, illustrated by a way that we play. Because life really isn't that serious if we allow ourselves to play and to bring forth our joy. When I was on the seesaw, I imagine, you know, you're kind of in the middle and you're, you're continuously either going left or right, left or right, left or right, because there's wind or, you know, you, you've, you've moved your stance a little bit. And I like that. I like that as the idea of leaning towards your inspiration, leaning towards that urge. And in, in last, the last time that we got together to record, I, I shared that I was watching the, the neighborhood kids chase the butterfly. And they weren't chasing it so that they could catch it. They were all just being drawn towards the direction of the butterfly. And I think that, that our own intuition does that same thing. So, so when you said learn and change direction, that's us adjusting and being nudged left and right. And continuing to reestablish our center of gravity and where we are based on what's coming at us. You know, I wrote down because I thought I was going to use this as an answer and I'm going to use it now, that wisdom <laughs> is a spiritual intelligence. You know, that free-flowing, that movement. And that mm. leads, me, leads me to um, how love being grooming, love being grooming, love being <laughs> human will help you grow in wisdom. And, and because the basic premise of, of love being human is to know yourself, the way that it will help you grow in wisdom if you use it and you utilize it and you bring it into your life is that it's going to help you to learn your, learn about yourself, to see yourself through your own eye and to know, know in a knowing that doesn't require thought, to know what is true and honest for yourself. And what comes to mind as an example is I used to have the hardest time knowing what... Um, my favorite flavor of ice cream was. There's so many choices. And we used to have this thing, um, this ice cream chain near us when I was growing up called 31 Flavors or something like that. Mm -hmm. 31. That's too many <laughs> to choose from. Right? It is. <laughs> so give me three. <laughs> I just, well, 30. So, so I settled on vanilla. And for my whole life, I've been like, my favorite flavor is vanilla. Because it's just safe. <laughs> Right. I was always being safe. And you know what? I figured out, Rebecca. What? I'm not I'm not even an ice cream kind of girl. I'm a gelato kind of girl. Oh. I was mm. never going to 
to settle on an ice cream because I prefer gelato. Mm, I so, do too. So, ooh, I didn't know that about you. Oh, yeah, I love gelato. Mm, I ate it in Italy when we went to Italy, Vivian. That oh. was my first experience with gelato, and my husband and I didn't mean to get you off track, no, but go we for would it. go... We, ha we would work it into our day, and, and we would walk a whole bunch, and we would plan to go for an espresso, which over there, it's like this spoonful of coffee that will just roll your eyeballs around, which oh. we would, and gelato, and we would do that like every day. That sounds heavenly. <laughs> it was. I didn't heavenly. mean to get you off track. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's beautiful. You brought up gelato. Yeah. Oh, we loved it. I loved it. <laughs> But is it, isn't that odd? I think that sometimes we, we go down the rabbit hole on the wrong question. Yep. And so, so both wisdom and moving through and finding your wisdom, you know, through love being human is figuring yourself out. But I think it's in a way putting your mind inside of your heart. Mm. Like literally imagine your, your heart being this jewelry box and your mind has been this balloon that's just been free flowing everywhere the whole time. And you take it and you just put it inside of your heart and let it be nurtured by your heart. And I think that's when you start to, to discern, like we said in our, in our last episode, and figure out what is wise for you. I couldn't figure out my ice cream because I like gelato. And now I think I like I want to go to Italy and have it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> but we've all got to be more of who we are. You know, we were born a certain way, and then we got things added on afterwards. I actually heard Eckhart Tolle say it, but it's also in the Bible. I heard him say that Jesus Christ, I don't know what verse it is, but he said, I am fully human, fully human. I am, I am everything that you are, but I'm nothing else. And so dropping all those things that, that make us heavy and take us away from who we really are is, is how we grow in wisdom. And, and maybe, if it fits for you, love being human can be that framework to take you up towards and move that, that knowledge through these layers, you know, through your humanity, which is, you know, your, all these systems we have. We have our biorhythms, our drives, our appetites, you know, and are you nurturing and honoring that piece of you? And if you aren't, what can you create and, and how can you expand in the being section? You know, if I went back to yoga, I'd missed for a whole bunch of times and I was like, I didn't remember how great it was for me. Help me remember, right? So what practice are you, are you incorporating into your daily life to create that space? And then that will allow you to move into you know, all those inspired actions we talk about, all those things that are loving and kind and compassionate, and then move back. And then, you know, flow in and out and through your your being, who you are and who you're being. I think that's a good place to stop because I feel like I'm rambling. Oh, Vivian, thank you. That's beautiful. I wrote that down, putting your mind inside your heart. Thank you. And um, we also want to thank our audience for being with us here today. And if you enjoyed the conversation, we invite you to connect with us by joining our inner circle at VivianCarrasco.com. And I'm going to close with a final thought from Vivian. Remember, move with purpose and take inspired action. <music> This podcast offers you the opportunity to explore new perspectives through compelling interviews with beautiful human beings and words of wisdom and love. The show was created to guide and inspire you. If you're looking for more meaning in your day-to-day -day life, if you're looking to be wowed by everyday people, if you're on a journey to joy, peace of mind, freedom, or a wild new adventure, then honey, you are in the right place. Welcome to Turning Inward with Dr. Vivian.